Welcome to a series of lectures on spectroscopy. This is the first lecture and its title is Introduction to Spectroscopy. Spectroscopy is part of our everyday life. Every time we look at things, we perform a spectroscopic experiment. There is light which comes from the sun or some artificial light source. This light falls on the objects that we look at and these objects change the color of the incoming light because they absorb some of the colors. The light not absorbed reaches our eyes. There its color is analyzed by three different types of photoreceptors which are sensitive for different colors of the incoming light. Thus our eyes analyzes the color of the incoming light. This is not so much different from the experiments we perform in the laboratory. Also in the lab there is a light source, an object that reflects, transmits, scatters and absorbs light and a wavelength de dependent detector. An apparatus for spectroscopic studies is called spectrometer. and the plot of a particular property of matter against wavelength, frequency or energy of radiation is called spectrum. Spectroscopy is not restricted to visible light. The definition states that spectroscopy is the study of the interaction of electromagnetic and particle radiation with matter. Why particle radiation? This is included because of the wave-particle dualism of matter. With this definition, X-ray diffraction, neutron scattering, electron microscopy and NMR are spectroscopic methods. However, we will not discuss these techniques here because they are covered in the Structural Biochemistry course. Instead, this course deals with the following techniques. uv vis spectroscopy, which is spectroscopy in the ultraviolet and visible spectral range, fluorescence, circular dichroism, Raman spectroscopy and infrared spectroscopy. Most of these use light in the ultraviolet and visible spectral range, but infrared spectroscopy uses infrared light. Apart from the fundamentals of these techniques, we will also discuss some of their applications in biological systems and biological processes. The methods that we discuss are very versatile. They are used for many, many different applications, not only in the life sciences. But in the life sciences, these techniques are used to study the structure and dynamics of biomolecules. Examples for research questions are how fast is a biological process? What is its molecular mechanism? And is the structure of a biomolecule affected when I change the conditions? For example, when I change the temperature or the pH value. An example for a biomolecule is shown here on the right hand side, which illustrates the protein bacteriorhodopsin. It is a protein that pumps proton across a membrane, this direction, and spectroscopy was used to find out how the proton is pumped through the membrane. Now there's something fundamentally wrong with this slide. This is a side issue, but it's important anyway. So I want you to contemplate a short while what is wrong here. It has nothing to do with the science, but with the way the science is presented. Of course, the reference for this illustration was missing. The illustration was not done by myself, but by, by my colleague Christian Cherp, who published it in his PhD thesis. Therefore, I have to give reference to him when I use his illustration. In the following, I will give you more examples about the use of spectroscopy to illustrate how widespread the applications of spectroscopy are. They are all examples from one particular technique, which is infrared spectroscopy. 
For example, infrared spectroscopy was used to detect water on Mars. This is just one example of how spectroscopy is used to get information about the outer space. Nearly all the information that we have from space comes from spectroscopy. Another example comes from the customs. The customs uses this technique to identify drugs. For example, when they confiscate a suspicious powder, they have to know what it contains. So they use this technique to identify the content of the powder. The police uses this technique to identify explosives. The slide here shows a robot that can be used to study a suspicious object. It opens the object, takes out a sample, moves it to the spectrometer and puts it on the spectrometer. The sample is analyzed and the spectrometer can then tell whether the object contains explosives or not. A further example is from the food industry, where the technique is used to control the quality and the origin of food. For example, it can be used to check whether a wine that claims to come from Tuscany actually comes from this region. These examples might seem a little exotic, but this should not give the impression that spectroscopy is used only for exotic applications. Instead, these examples are supposed to illustrate how widespread the use of spectroscopy is in the analytical sciences.